At what point are public clouds too costly for AI? Some recent research has the number. Let's talk about that. So welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider. This channel explores the ins and outs of cloud computing without an agenda, our following into the narrative set by big tech marketing. We look at what works and what does not, and the actual value of this technology in a balanced and information forward way. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, and comment. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, cloud and AI architect, top 10 cloud and AI influencer, B-list geek, and over the hill mountain biker. Let's get started. So as I mentioned last time, channel memberships are now open. Uh, I record these things sometimes a month, <laughs> a month and a half in advance. Uh, busy life, and so I may have to disappear for a while, and I want to make sure you guys have some content. So if you're a channel member, uh, you can see that content anytime. So as soon as I post it, uh, instead of waiting for the uh, pub date, you can go ahead and take a watch. And I see few people are doing that, and it's, it's very... Uh, encouraging to me. I love my content watched. I love people who are benefiting from it. So, you know, keep it up and also let me know what you want to see. So also I realized we covered this topic kind of in the last show, last episode, and uh, I don't want to be too redundant here, but it's interesting that this seems to be something that keeps coming up over and over in the press. And so there was some research done in this case by Deloitte, the company I used to work for, and they highlighted the IT. This was highlighted in IT Pro Today article, which reveals the increasing pressure organizations are facing regarding cloud costs as they adopt AI. This article and this report point out that many organizations are unprepared for the rapid escalating expenses associated with AI workloads in cloud environments. So, what's happening now is that people are looking for platforms to run their AI systems, AI systems that are obviously going to be very strategic to the organization, also very expensive. And they're finding that in looking at the public cloud platforms that are out there, they're just cost prohibitive, as we talked about last week. And what's interesting about this report, they don't only say and state that they're cost prohibitive, but they they have a number <laughs> that is, uh, uh, you can use, which is going to be uh, 60 to 70 percent, you know, based on the total cost of ownership getting up to a point where if you're scaling your AI up to a certain spin point, then private clouds, on-prem alternative, alt clouds, you know, such as Core Weave and those sorts of things may be better alternatives. And I think that's kind of cool because I think we've been talking about this. I've been talking about this for many years. Uh, everybody seems to have targeted the public cloud providers as the place where their AI systems are going to run. Obviously, that's not going to be cost effective, not all of the time. In fact, most of the time it's not. And people are seeing that now and they're looking to accommodate their AI workloads and AI storage and AI inference and AI training on more cost effective plas platforms. In this case, it's going to be platforms that are owned because the price of hardware is very cheap now. So the report highlights a cost inflection point and organizations hit a critical cost inflection point. Uh, for public clouds, for AI expenses, when they reach about 60 to 70%, as I mentioned earlier, of total ownership costs for dedicated infrastructure. At this threshold, moving to private cloud solutions often becomes the more economical choice, according to the report, according to Deloitte. So they're looking at all of the organizations out there that are considering moving uh, to AI. And, and obviously, p many companies are strategically leveraging AI as something that's going to be an innovative differentiator for the company. So it's going to be very important for the company. And, but they're very careful about the platforms that they pick, very much like 10 years ago, you know, 15 years ago, when you know had, people had the cloud-only movement, and we talked about last time, you know, suddenly uh, everybody was moving into the cloud. And, you know, here we are 15 years later, and we're finding that those, those uh, movements, those migrations, weren't as cost effective, cost efficient as we thought they were going to be. And that's why we're seeing many repatriations occurring today. So the enterprises are a bit skittish about where they're going to host their AI platforms. And they're doing a deep dive into looking at the cloud platforms in terms of what they're actually going to cost when they run them longer term. And it's coming back very expensive. And many of the alternatives are the alt cloud stuff, private cloud, special cloud providers, things like that, are typically going to be more economically viable. They're better to optimize and we're going to get more bang for the buck. Sometimes it's going to be a fifth the cost. And so that's significant. 
And that's money that the enterprises can save. And that goes right back into the value of the business. So AI workloads are characterized by exponential cost uh, scaling due to their intensive compute and storage needs. This creates a stark contrast to traditional application costs, prompting organizations to reassess their cloud strategies as expenses rise quickly. Talked about this a bunch of times, and I definitely talked about this on uh, on my other channel, Dave is Not AI. The cost of running AI systems, and if you're going to build these things, it's going to be two to five times uh, the price of uh, traditional system counterparts. In other words, we're we're building a system using AI versus traditional technology, traditional development approaches, then we're going to find we're going, we're, we're going to be spending two to sometimes five times the amount of money on building and deploying and operating the system. So the uh, ur- issue is rather urgent. In other words, if we're going to spend that much money on the AI systems, we're trying to figure out how to best utilize that spending. And that's why we're having this conversation now. So there's also a need for hardware acceleration. The emergence of AI-specific processors such as uh, NPUs and TPUs and, of course, GPUs significantly enhances computational efficiency and energy consumption. As these technologies evolve, there is a pressing need to redesign existing IT infrastructure to support their capabilities. So in many cases, I made this case before, the hyperscalers, the public cloud providers, the big three cloud providers out there, did not build their infrastructure for AI. They can certainly run AI, but it's not going to be as efficient as a public cloud provider like CoreWeave or, you know, some of the the public cloud that NVIDIA just launched, where it's purpose built for AI capabilities. And that's going to be a tremendous advantage when considering how we're going to utilize these special processors and utilize the unique processing needs for AI, including training, and including inference. So it's better to have a platform that's purpose built for it. And therefore it's going to be better optimized for this particular workloads uh, profile, which is what AI needs. So next the report talks about the emergence of edge computing. The demand for ultra low latency in AI applications drives the need for distributed infrastructure represented by edge computing or pushing processing out toward where the data is going to be absorbed or where the processing is going to be used. This shift allows for local processing of data, reducing dependencies on cloud connectivity and improving application performance. So what we're stating here is that edge computing is an architectural option that many of the organizations that are looking to deploy AI should consider. In other words, instead of running them in the cloud or the holistic platform in the cloud, run them closest to where the processes, in this case case processes that are run by AI or defined by AI, can do the most good. And so we no longer are limited by centralizing everything that we're building. So, and that was a problem with cloud computing. Everything had to exist on a centralized platform. And in many cases, if there's a lot of latency in communicating with the processes on that platform and communicating with the databases on that platform, you're not going to get as much value out of those systems and it's going to be costly to run you got to remember you're paying for those network costs so if we push the processing closest to where they can do the most good in this case edge-based deployments for ai that's going to be in many instances way more effective now keep in mind that edge you know people 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 typically think it's a device no edge computing can be any form of computing that exist away from the centralized processing system, the centralized database system that's closest to where it can do the most good. It can even be a cloud. We have edge cloud systems, you know, certainly private clouds can have edge computing capabilities. So we're not limited by limited low processing and low power devices. This can be any compute platform that can be considered an edge device. So we need to think about this when we do our architectures. So we need to consider the infrastructure investment spectrum when it comes to AI. Organizations are exploring a wide range of infrastructure investment strategies, creating a choose-your-own-adventure scenario. Options vary from cloud-only approaches to multi-million dollar private infrastructure deployments shaped by factors such as security requirements, data sovereignty, and scalability challenges. So what that says is we need to open up our mind and consider all viable platforms as platform options to run our AI workloads and consider what the AI workloads are going to do and consider what the platform requirements should be, the infrastructure requirements should be. And it's not always going to be a public cloud provider. We stated that many times in this channel. I don't have to state it here. I'm sure you guys get it by now. 
Um, but we have to op open up our minds to any platform that will provide us the best optimized architecture to support this very important infrastructure. And let's face it, AI is very important. Well, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my other videos on this channel as well as my other YouTube channel, Dave is Not AI. Also, check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course, my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, you guys stay very, very safe. Later.